All right, hey everybody, welcome to Free Will, Science and Religion. I'm here with Trick Slattery and Jamie Soden. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to talk about free will, the belief in free will relative to our criminal justice system. I mean, the basic theme is that, like, to the extent that we, that our, our society, our, our judges, um, our, the police, you know, the to the extent we believe in free will, you know, essentially what we're doing is we're blaming people who absolutely have nothing fundamentally to do with what they do. We know that people commit crimes and we have to address that, but because of the belief in free will, it's, it's our um, understanding that the treatment of these people, you know, is much more harsh and unfair. And so to the extent that our world evolves from uh, beyond this belief in free will, we can, I think, hopefully not only create a, a fairer criminal justice system, but also hopefully uh, one that's much more effective. All right, Trick. So, um, what, what's, how do you, um, what do you think the the biggest problem is, or you know, what what do you think the um, the, the challenge is in, in terms of like changing the system? I think currently uh, in our in our current criminal justice system, we have a. Uh, more of a retributive aspect, meaning that people want to punish those uh, who commit crimes. They feel that they're deserving of these punishments, and, and, and so it's it's more of a um, a way of thinking about these people need to be punished for what they've done, uh, rather than these people need to be rehabilitated for what they've done, or rather than they need to be prevented just to prevent them from redoing what they have done in the past to, to, as a preventative me measure. Um, the other side of, the th of that is deterrence. So we have incarceration, we have rehabilitation, um, we have retributive justice, which is what we're pretty much against uh, because people aren't truly to blame for what they've done. Uh, but then we have deterrence. So we, we, we kind of have to um, play to, I think, uh, this deterrence aspect as well. And, and that how we do that uh, really is um, something that needs to be carefully calibrated. Uh, in other words, we don't want to be too extreme with our deterrence. Uh, we want to be as fair as possible because we know that the person that actually committed the crime really didn't have the control over that. They, that was something that was... Uh, causally just they are led to um, but at the same time we understand that having some uh, some type of deterrence prevents further infractions of these types of crimes so we have to kind of play to that to some degree uh, and how we do that kind of um, is based on our understandings of these people aren't really truly to blame so so how can we do it in such a way that these people aren't being harmed to such and such degree, uh, so it's kind of like a balancing act we have to play there. Okay, that sounds great. So, in, in other words, the the main problem is that, like, with the free will belief, we add this extra element that's unnecessary, unfair, and that's that's harsh and cruel. In other words, the unfair element is that these people deserve. To, to suffer because they have a free will, because they did what they did of their own free will. So, all right, so Jamie, how, how does it sound like, you know, how do you believe we can change our system so it's fairer, you know, and still effective by overcoming this belief? Well, first of all, we need to um, address the uh, issue with how they're portrayed in the media, because when it's in the news report, right, a lot of the time you would hear the words evil or scum being used in the context of like you know what these people are rather than um, being a product of you know bad chemicals should we say Jamie that's excellent so again like it's not just the judges and the police and the the corrections um, officers and, and, and all that it, it's society in general you're right when when people you know are vilified by by the press people want revenge all right, and so like so here's so trick as as you were saying so basically we have to balance it and I think that the idea is that like yeah we need reward and punish because because we as human beings 
respond to reward and punishment. If we think we're going to be punished for doing something, robbing a bank or something, you know, that's going to deter us from doing it. Um, so we absolutely need that. But, um, but again, with the free will belief, um, it goes from simple deterrence to, um, to, to much more, to kind of like adding on um, more punishment than, than, than is necessary. Right. Um, all right, so like, basically, like, so we've got a message I think that's very important. So, you know... Well, we can't I, remove all punishment because we need some to deter, like, wrongdoing in the first place, but we don't need the excessive uh, punishment that, you know, Christ, Christian conservatives are often in favor of, like, you know, capital punishment. I mean, we don't necessarily need that to stop, you know, people from killing because life in prison does just as well to stop that same offender from reoffending, provided that they're never let out to begin with, you know. Well, that's the thing. So, in other words, it's deterrence, it's, and it's also rehabilitation. So, we also need the um, the punishment for rehabilitation. You know, to you know, in other words, if, if people were like would um, go into you know into a jail or prison, and you know, mm. life would be just as good for them there, then that wouldn't be that wouldn't deter, that wouldn't re rehabilitate. All right. So, but trick, what what you know, what does the public have to hear? How does the public have to hear this to be able to like accept the message that that you know? Um, that that you know this free will belief really is very harmful. Well, I mean, obviously they need to understand the whole free will uh, debate. They need to understand uh, why people aren't truly to blame for what they've done. Uh, they need to think of people more as, uh, especially criminals, more as somebody that has um, a dysfunctional part of their um, structure. So so. Uh, if if we were taking somebody that that's done something crazy, like killed killed another person, and then we found out later that they've had a they had a brain tumor that was pressing on a certain part of their um, prefrontal cortex, causing a problem, uh, causing them to to have these thoughts that that control their uh, actions, uh, we would automatically not blame that person. We we would put them in a psychiatric ward or or we'd put them in a, a place where we try to rehabilitate, rehabilitate these problems. And, and we'd, we'd, we'd look at, at the brain and we'd say, oh, this person had a, um, has a, a tumor that's causing this problem. Uh, for the free will debate, it's not a tumor. I mean, the people, people don't always have tumors, but um, they, also, they have this structure that they have no control over, just like the tumor except they have no control over their structure of their brain at that given time. So we have to kind of relate these two type of things and say they're not really that far apart from each other. They're, they're a lot closer than we, than we actually think they are. That's a great point because a lot of people believe that, well, oh, if we, if we get real, rid of this free will myth, this free will belief, then society is going to collapse. There's not going to be any kind of like anyone's, anyone – Will will say, well, you can't really hold me responsible because I don't have free will. That means you can't punish me and all that. But all right, that's the fear. Now we already have in our society a system that acknowledges people's lack of free will. In other words, like like you were um, suggesting, the um, the mental health system. If if somebody has whether it's a tumor or they have uh, an emotional diagnosis, some kind of like condition. I mean, the law takes account for that. Now, even so, I think here in the United States, the law is still, you know, quite punitive, regardless of the mental health things, because there, there are a lot. You know, I think our world, our, our prisons are filled with people with with diagnoses that really shouldn't be there. They should be, you know, treated more humanely. Exactly, and in fact, they they say that that the largest grouping of psychopathic people are in our criminal system, are in jail, basically. Um, that, that's not saying that everybody that's in prison is a psychopath, but the, the largest grouping of them are in, actually, prison, and that um, those people really have an issue with uh, their prefrontal cortex and their, I think it's their amygdala, is, is not functioning, functioning properly, and and that causes these problems. So we're not really we're not really looking at that though. We're we're just throwing them in prisons and saying they did they did wrong and that's that. And they're just 
they're in these prisons, and a lot of them are in solitary confinement, which is actually even more cruel, cruel and unusual punishment that um, we know that has devastating effects on their um, psychology and their mental health. And so, so we're making problems worse in our criminal system currently, uh, especially with things like solitary confinement. So, Absolutely. And so, again, like, you know, the medical establishment, you know, I think um, understands, you know, in other words, like they don't, people aren't blamed for having, you know, these psychiatric conditions in the medical establishment, but like, you know, within the criminal justice system, you're exactly right. You know, because of this belief in free will, you know, that, that, very key aspect is ignored. So, Jamie, um, can we? We've got to let's explain in more detail for the audience why these people, people who commit crimes, why nobody really has a free will. Well, no one has a free will because they can't override the, um, you know, uh, conditions that, um, you know, um, cause them to behave the way they did. Or, you know, say for example your education system, like you learn a language, you learn like English or Spanish or whatever, but whatever language you speak was based on, you know, what you were, what language you were taught, you know. Exactly. So, All right. Yeah. Did you have more to say, Jamie, or? Oh, go on. All right. So like, yeah, no, like relative to crime, for example, like, you know, it's not an accident that, that, that um, kids from very poor neighborhoods and very large cities are much more likely to be involved in crimes than kids from suburban backgrounds who, who, who live, you know, very affluent lives. I mean, like that's, you know, that, that's a good example. So now there's certain kinds of like societal structures, the way society, you Standards, know, yeah. exactly that, that, so we have, so basically these, these criminals and that's like the environmental um, aspect. In other words, like we know from psychology, from biology that organisms, human beings, we do what we do based on nature and nurture, you know, heredity and environment. So if, so again, for these criminals, if it's not the environment, and it could, this could be like, they could be living, for example, and, and you know, their, their parents make, you know, a lot of money, but, but maybe one of their parents is a psychopath and maybe they learn it from them. So like, you know, this learning can come um, to them in different ways, but if it's not the learning from the environment, then obviously something is, is like, you know, wrong with them in terms of genetics, and so right. like, you know, so they, there's no way, you know, that's, that's why we don't have a free will. I mean, there's other ways to describe why we don't have a free will, because the causality, the pleasure that's principle. That's bad programming, technically speaking. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so, um, so Trick, um, so how, all right, so kind of like describe the kinds of changes within the criminal justice system that you envision as our world, because it's happening, it's not happening fast enough, but as our world, you know, evolves and overcomes this belief in free will, what do you see happening and, and what do you see as the effects of it? Well, I think the whole idea of retribu retribution within the justice system basically has to vanish. So no more people um, being punished just for what they've done, but rather... Uh, there's a, there has to be a reason why we do things, uh, other than this person deserves uh, such and such punishment, um, and that's that's primarily that's a that's a big thing in our justice system. Currently, I mean, we do some rehabilitation, we do you know incarceration to prevent people, but we also make things a little more extreme uh, to some degree, and we we. We make things as punishments just because we think that that kind of uh, fulfills somebody's psychology. Uh, if if someone's a victim of a crime, especially they they get something out of out of someone being punished. But but it's that it's that type of thing that has to kind of be removed from from our psychologies. Uh, so it's 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 not just the justice system that's problem, but but it's actually the psychology of everybody around. Um, who want this uh, vengeance or retribution to happen because uh, they're not really understanding that the person didn't really have control over those factors. Exactly. Um, I think you're right. It, it's not just the judges. It's not, you know, for example, the police. You know, the police basically um, 
police officers, you know, probably almost um, all of them have this belief in free will. And so, like, when they encounter a criminal, they're not going to treat that criminal with respect. They're going to, like, they're going to act as judges immediately. They're going to, like, you know, they're going to impose justice and, you know, punish. You know, you've seen these videos of, of police kind of, like, beating on people, you know, just so, so. So this belief in free will, first of all, it creates a lot of hatred, a lot of, like, unnecessary violence, disrespect. And so, like, in terms of changing, like, the the police um, system, the the criminal, um, the you know, police officers, they, they understand in terms of like law enforcement that uh, one of the strategies they use is called like good cop, bad cop. So like you know, if they're trying to get information from from a suspect, from someone, you know, they may have one one cop that really is like you know intentionally offensive and I think this is wrong but they do this you know kinda of like really tries to scare the, the criminal and just like abuse the criminal and then you have another cop that intentionally you know treats the criminal re with respect with understanding with compassion you know with the, with the kind of like behavior that would naturally stem from understanding that nobody has a free will and what they find is like this approach actually leads the the, the suspects or the criminals to cooperate much more with, with what's happening so in other words like to the extent we we overcome this belief in free will and not only the judges but and, and the corrections officers you know but also the police you know understand that that these people that they're dealing with you know on the street and all it's not up to them it's not you know the what they do is not fundamentally up to them, then that will lead to much more respectful and hopefully much more effective police um, suspect interactions. Yeah, yeah. The police interactions is pretty much just playing to the psychology of the individual to try to get information out of them or things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, some of the things, some of the procedures that are done there, they're, they're probably unethical to some degree <laughs> but right all right so Jamie what in what other ways will our world change as we as we reform our criminal justice system with the simple you know but very very powerful acknowledgement that nobody has a free will well there does there does seem to be an inconsistency with um, you know laws in different countries I mean in some countries the drinking age is 21 like you know, in the United States of America but um, in the UK, I think uh, the drinking age is 18 and stuff. I mean, why do we have these inconsistent laws? I mean, why don't we have, like, a universal law that we stick to, you know? Yeah, and I guess that, and actually that's that's interesting because that's, like, that's a free will related question because you're right. I mean, like, you know, whether you think a person, you know, somebody should, like, be able to drink at 16 or at 18 or 21 really depends on where you live. You know, in some parts of the world, you know, I think it's completely safe to be drinking at 16. In other parts, may, maybe not. I mean, it, it, it's hard to say. But um, but that's, a, that's that's yet another reason why what we do is really determined by where we live, by our environment. All, all right. Another another way I think that um that overcoming the belief in free will w is will make our our criminal justice system much more effective is because like with the present system, as J as Jamie was saying before. The media vilifies these these criminals. Society in general, you know, we 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 um we condemn them. We um we really hate them to a great extent, and we label them. We label them criminals. You're evil people. You're you know the the media sometimes calls them monsters. And so what happens, you know, basically they if if society is seeing them in that way. You know, it's going to be much, much more likely that they're going to see themselves in that way. And like it's in, in terms of basic psychology, we know that self-identity, you know, right. how we view ourselves is going to influence very strongly how we act. So in other words, like if these um, if these criminals are in prison or jail for months or years and society is telling them that they're evil people, well, that's going to work against rehabilitation because that's you know, they're going to see themselves. Well, you know, like. I am an evil person because society's telling me that. So, like, you know, that's yeah. basically going to like uh, go go against their their um, efforts to reform. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, they're going to see themselves basically as a lost cause, and and once they see themselves as, as a lost cause, it's just going to escalate down that path. So, okay, and let's talk about economics. Um, they did an experiment. Um, I think it's like over a hundred years ago in England where. Um, 
basically there were you know back a long time ago they had pretty harsh penalties for pretty you know um you know not not very serious crimes you right. know that and and so like then they began an experiment that they would lessen the penalties for for these crimes and naturally most people would say and i kind of like makes sense that people fear that oh my god if you lessen the penalties crime will go up you know so but but they tried it they did the experiment and what they discovered actually was the crime not only went down it went down substantially you know so so basically so to the extent that we are like in other words like uh, somebody does a crime and let's say out of fairness or out of effectiveness in terms of like being a deterrent a rehabilitative factor let's say uh, six months in prison you know or in jail um, sounds like the right amount of time okay that's but our free will belief our free will belief may turn that into like a year, two years, five years because of this hatred element. And I mean, not only does that, I think, go against the rehabilitation of the prisoner because then it fills them with contempt for society, you know, but I think it's also far more expensive. I mean, like, I think this free will belief is making the criminal justice system far more expensive than it needs to be. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's sort of like the death penalty as well um, that... Uh, people think that might be a deterrent, but in reality, when you, when you look at the stats, um, none of that really drives uh, any less um, murders, for example, uh, to happen. Uh, statistically, in, in fact, I think they said that uh, that uh, in states that have the death penalty, there's actually um, less uh, homos homicides than there are I'm sorry, there's more homicides in states that have the death penalty than in states that don't for some reason. And they're not really sure why, but, but, but it just happens to be the stats uh, on average I'm talking about here too, and not, not just uh, based on the state itself. And then they say that, that uh, even in states that do have the death penalty, when, when you, um, if you have like, uh, they, they, I guess they did, a, they did stats on uh, six months prior to to a um, where they where they put somebody to death, uh, they do the stats on that, and then six months after that, and they kind of try to weigh those those together to see if there's a, a deterrent effect, and it turns out there isn't a deterrent effect there either. So so it's as a deterrent, there's certain things that seem like they might be a deterrent, but in reality, they're not really much of a deterrent. Okay, so it's basically we're saying, yeah, that like, you know, this, this, this whole death penalty <coughs> thing is based on this very harmful belief in free will. It's, you know, people hate the, the criminals, and so they want them put to death. And, um, all right, let's talk rehabilitation. Um, because, you know, I think the other important component is that, like, under the, the, the free will belief, you know, the understanding is, well, you know, once they're in prison, it really doesn't matter what we do or don't do, how much we help them or how, how little we help them. And this actually also applies to when kids are growing up. You know, we, we, you know with the free will belief, it goes the, um, the opinion that, well, you know, like, it won't matter if we spend less on our education systems, on, on like, you know, on helping kids to not end up as criminals because the, the rationale goes because they have a free will in other words we could be spending a lot of money trying to condition you know these kids to not be criminals and then when they become criminals we could be spending a lot of money trying to condition them to rehabilitate them to um to overcome their tendencies for crime but this free will belief prevents us from doing that because basically people think because they have a free will any kind of conditioning that we do won't work or so trick address that address the how that's like not just a, um, a harmful kind of like a um a belief but it's actually just wrong it, it doesn't recognize the reality of the situation right right i mean it, it's it's just flat out basically a total mistake and and it's it's a mistake in thinking that we're we're some agents that have control over our, who and what we are and we, we aren't um we're totally causal and and everything everything interplays with each other so so when we say rehabilitation we're talking about 
uh, all of our learning, uh, the way we teach. So we're, we're, we're talking about teaching people different behaviors and, and, and behaviors come about um, through these type of, of people learning different things. Uh, they learn, for example, um, a new way to do something and that changes their behavior to be able to take that path that they haven't seen uh, prior. So, so a, lot of, a lot of crimes that occur happen because people have uh, a really tunnel vision. Uh, they don't see other options in front of them. Uh, they, they have to steal this X to, get, uh, to eat, for example, because uh, they don't see the other lines uh, that they can take. They don't see those variables. Uh, and, and just educating people on those other options alone uh, gives them different tools. It gives them a different tool set that they can uh, use to uh, not take the path that's going to cause the problems. Um, and then with, there's the people with the psychological disorders like psychopathy and th things like that where, uh, where we, we, it, might be, it might take pharmaceuticals or it might take... Um, I, Jamie sent me an interesting video where uh, they, they might install microchips in the future uh, to uh, replace dysfunctional parts of the brain. And, that, and that's an interesting idea to just to think about in the future uh, how, of how uh, rehabilitation could happen. And, and we have to look at the ethics of that and all that. But, but we have to understand that it, these are just causal variable, variables that lead people to different outcomes. Exactly. Okay, so the, the point is, yes, we don't have a free will, but that does not mean that we are not, um, we're not able, able to change, you know, by, by the way other people treat us by, by, by various programs. In other words, like, you know, if, if prisoners, while they're in prison, are educated on why they, what they did was wrong and unnecessarily wrong, and if they're educated on, on better ways to navigate their lives, that's going to work. So, right. Jamie, Jamie um, what are some of the ways, what are some of the things I think the prisoners need to learn that they're not learning now because of this free will belief? Well, the obvious is to be, you know, they need to be told that their actions are harmful and they need to be told that, you know, um, there is a better way to live life than um, to go around, um, you know, continuing down the path um, that they've uh, been going down. Yeah, and actually, you, you just like, another point we haven't dealt with yet is like, it's actually the reason why many people commit crimes, because a lot of crimes aren't about like, you know, robbing a bank, a lot of crimes are like assaults on other people, or like harming other people, and when you look at those kinds of crimes, you, you kind of like quickly realize that many of them, perhaps most of them, are committed because the people, you know, are attributing, the, 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 the criminals, the people who commit the crimes, are attributing free will to the the person to the victim. In other words, they're saying to themselves, oh, well, this person of their free will did this or whatever, so, like, I'm going to impose justice on them, on them. I'm going to, like, you know, harm them, take something from them because it's justice, because they have a free will. It's, so, in other words, like, to the extent that, like, our society overcomes belief in free will, not only with our, will our criminal justice system be fairer, more effective, but there will be less crime because, you know, I, I you know, we, we've yeah. got to try to get figures on this, but I, I would say at least 20, 30, 40 percent of, of all crime has to do with people attributing free will to others. Right, okay. right. When, once people learn that others aren't to blame, then they kind of lose some of that anger, that I think, that, that is based on that. Um, I, think, I think, as a matter of fact, anger itself is, is kind of a natural extension to uh, being able to place blame on what someone's done. Uh, to some degree. Trick, um, Trick, that's a great point. We've got about a minute left, but let's talk about that uh, briefly. Basically, with the free will belief, not only are we harming these criminals and these, these people who are fundamentally innocent, we're harming ourselves. You know, when we hate, we might, we might get the, a cheap, like, thrill or pleasure from this we might it might you know appeal to our lower instinct but in general for us as individuals and for our, us as a society when we hate people when we hate groups of people based on this belief of free will we're harming ourselves you know we, we become a, a world filled with hatred and that does nobody any good okay we've got about 
30 seconds left. Basically, uh, we've been exploring why um, the free will belief is harmful to the criminal justice system and how overcoming it can help us create a better criminal justice system, a better society in general. We'll keep talking about this. This is um, George Ortega, Trick Slattery, and Jamie Soden for the Free Will Science and Religion podcast. We'll see you again soon. Thanks.